sure nice up here in the mountain. Oh, sakes alive, Willamay. This here's no mountain. Just a little more than an anthill. My husband says this is what they call a Wind River Range. Ain't that so, Mrs. Frazier? No. This here is Antelope Hills that climbs into it. It'll be another two or three days before we're really in the mountains. You mean we gotta climb to the top of that? No, we, uh, we go through a pass. South Pass. And that's a name to reckon with. Ben said if he were still a young buster, that's as far as he'd go. Why is that? Gold, girl, gold. Heaps of gold. They're striking it rich up there. <laughs> What's giving you such a case of the miseries? You know. Why don't you come on to bed? Maude, I feel like a stinking rattlesnake. Don't start that all over again. I don't like what we're doing. These people trust me. They need me. Oh, stop worrying about them. They ain't gonna be able to make it without me. Oh, hogwash. Ben Breen's been across it half a dozen times. He can't take over. He ain't got enough left in him. They can't depend on him. So they can't depend on him, so they depend on you. So I ask you, who can I depend on? Maybe we ought to take the other route. Get them safe at least as far as Salt Lake. The other route to Salt Lake? Well, that would take weeks there and back. Well, the gold will still be there. Sure, with somebody else's claim on it. Well, a few weeks won't make that much difference. And how do we get to South Pass from Salt Lake? We've got nothing more than when we left St. Joe. Well, I can work us back somehow. Take another train and abandon it instead of this one? What would be the difference? A big difference. It's bad, rough country ahead. Worse than any we've been through. If you really loved me, you wouldn't ask me to do a thing like this. And if you really loved me, there wouldn't be anything you wouldn't do to make me happy. I love you. I want you to be happy. Then be a man and stop weakening into a nothing. I can't stand weaklings. I, I, I'm sorry. I, I, I didn't mean that. I, I know you're not a weakling. Oh, Maude. We stay on this trail and quit at South Pass. You know he will, if that's the way you want it. We were getting close to hostile Shoshone and Sioux country when we heard about another wagon train near us that was heading for what seemed like sure trouble. Chris Hale thought I ought to go and warn him. Scout for the Chris Hill wagon train. Howdy. You're Mr. Frazier, aren't you? The Frazier train didn't you pull out of St. Joe a few days before we did? That's right. You're a little far north, aren't you? North of what? Well, I'd advise you to keep away from Sweetwater and the South Pass. You'd be better off going by Bitter Creek in the basin. Well, what's so fine down there? Well, I wouldn't depend too much on the peace that Red Cloud has made. Well, you worry about your terrain and I'll run mine. Morning, ma'am. Ma'am, perhaps you could convince Mr. Yes, I heard. Yes, ma'am. That's your wife, Mr. Fraser? Yes, what about her? That looks to me like she's got too pretty a head to get scalped. <laughs>
I think you're going to be all right, aren't you? Please, please say you're going to be all right. I need you so. You need me? I wouldn't know what to do without you. You don't need me. You never like weaklings. <laughs> you're not a weakling. Yes, I am. Because I could never say no to you. Because I couldn't see that you never really loved me. But I can see all that now. Funny how you can be so afraid of the truth until you know you're going to die. And then it's all there. Clear as can be. I loved you. I love you now. Only for what I could do for you. I took these people to their deaths. Because you wanted gold. And for that I'll die too. But I can't buy your love anymore. I think I'm... I'm sorry for what I did to you. To them. I'm sorry for everything. I'm sorry for you, Maud. Because you've got to live thinking about all the people that died here today. You're not going to die, Isaac. Please, please, I beg you. You'll be alone with those thoughts, won't you, Maud? For once, Maud, I can't do what you want me to. I can't stay alive for you. Oh. You, Maud. You can stay alive with him. You must. They'll do us no good. What are we going to do with all the men dead and gone? What difference does it make? What have we got to live for now, anyway? You've got no right to say even that. Your, all your life is over. <laughs> well, I've a right to how I feel. Die, then. Lie down and die. But the rest of us don't want to die. I'm afraid. I'm terribly afraid. If it's God's will for us to live, we'll make out some way. Oh. How could we make up? I heard tell you've been across before, Mrs. Frazier. It was a long time ago. None of the rest of us have ever been across. If you've been over it, you're bound to know the way. Trail change, I, I don't know. Somebody's got to lead us. It's up to you. It's your responsibility. I guess the first thing we better do is fix Callie's arm so she's fit to travel. Then we'll take stock and see what we've got left to travel with. After that, we'll bury our dead. The lead's still in there. We've got to dig it out. We? Well, my hand's not steady enough. I don't know. I've never done anything like that before. Please, Mrs. Fraser. Couldn't hurt any worse than it already does.
sounds to me. They're not praying for the dead. They're praying for themselves. We may all be doing a heap of praying before we get back to civilization. Waiting up there again, Miss Fraser. We don't want to ride into another ambush. dark before we know it. How long is she figuring on keeping moving? She forgets. She's riding and we're walking. Yeah, she's always riding and we're always walking. I can't go on much further. Me neither. Maybe we ought to just tell her we got to stop. You tell her. I ain't going to. Last time I suggested something, she'd like to bite my head off. Well, somebody said to tell her. I'm all tuck it out. I'll tell her. I ain't afraid of her. Who's going with me? I'll go with you. What is it? Would we be stopping soon? No, not soon. We are fearful tired. I can't help it. We've been walking an awful long time. We can't stop here. We have to go on to where there's green a few miles ahead. We've got water enough for one night. Couldn't we make a dry camp? If we stop here, what are the horses going to eat? Everybody's as tired as I am. I'm not worried about you. I'm worried about the horses. Now we're going on till we get to that green. There's a stream there in grazing land. Mrs. Fraser, it's almost dark. They ain't gonna graze in the dark. We're not stopping till we get to that green. If it takes half the night, now get back in line. Every day, fussing and fuming more. They're getting awful weak, Maud. They can't march like that in a diet or a coarse biscuit and sow belly. But they need is fresh meat. Well, then we'll get the meat. <laughs> I don't think any of us can fish or shoot good enough. Oh, fiddlesticks. Trouble with us, we've been going along feeling helpless just because we're women. A woman can do doggone near anything a man can do. Now, we watch them put out lines for fishing. Why can't we do it? You know, when I was a kid, we were poor. To eat, we had to find game. I've watched my brothers take a piece of flannel and wrap it around a sapling stuck in the ground. Then we'd hide in the bush. Before long, deer would come along and see the rags waving and kind of curious, like, come up to see what it was all about. Bang! <laughs> we did all the venison we ever needed. And you know something, Bessie? Tomorrow morning early, I'm going hunting. <laughs> Thank you. 
We've been making out pretty well so far, better all the time. There's hardly a thing our men did for us that we can't do just as well. I think you'll all agree to that. Well, that doesn't mean we don't miss them, Mrs. Frazier. Of course we do, and that's my point. We're going to miss them even more when we get to California. Did you ever stop and think what we're going to do when we get there? How we're going to keep body and soul together? What kind of work a bunch of women can get? Now, things are a lot different now than when we left St. Joe. Most of us only came along in the first place because our men wanted to go west for one reason or another. Well, they're... They're dead and gone now. But it's still a man's world, and we're left alone in it to make out as best we can. What you say is more than likely true, Ma, but what can we do about it? We can't turn back. We just can't stay here. We can do just what your Ben said he always wanted to do, and my Isaac would have done if he hadn't had the responsibility of this train. You're not talking about South Pass. That's just what I am talking about. South Pass and gold. There's no reason why we can't dig with pick and shovel. Same as we've been doing a lot of other work that isn't exactly womanly. And just think, just think of landing in San Francisco with enough money to last us for the rest of our lives. But we've already gone by South Pass several days ago. So in the same amount of days we can be back there. What's the difference? We'll be traveling anyhow. Isn't it better to be going someplace with a purpose? That's where the Indians attacked us. I don't ever want to go near that place again. Oh, the Indians won't be there anymore. And they sure won't expect us to be doubling back. There's a lot more dangerous places between here and San Francisco. Just the thought of it scares me. Well, you know what scares me. The thought of living in poverty in San Francisco. I don't aim to be a scrub woman for the rest of my life. Not when there's gold within our reach and just for the taking. Now, you think about it, all of you. Just think whether you want to live in poverty or in luxury. And in the morning, I think you'll all agree it's best we turn back to South Pass. I'll stand the first watch. on your back so I'd turn around real easy if I was you. Aren't you Mrs. Frazier? Yes. And I remember you, Mr. McCullough. Where are the rest of your wagons? We lost them. What about your men? Don't you have any guards posted? We were hit by Indians. I'm sorry, Mrs. Frazier. Very sorry. But maybe you'd come to gloat. Why should I gloat? Seems to me you've paid a big enough price as it is. Lucky I saw you smoke. How does that make you lucky? Not me, lady, you. Well, now I'm having trouble figuring out how that makes me lucky. It makes you lucky because now I can lead you and your people to join my train. Thank you, Mr. McCullough, but we don't care to join anybody else's train. You don't really mean that. We're doing all right. We don't need any help. Yeah, but you women aren't very safe out here alone. Oh, we've been doing it for some time now, making out better every day. You got a long way to go. We'll make it our own way. I don't think you quite know what you're up against. The rivers are running unusually high this year. You got some tough crossings ahead. With only three wagons, you're a sitting duck for any hunting party that might stumble upon you. And I should think your provisions would be getting pretty low. Through with your speech? Yeah. I ordinarily don't make them. Then I'll thank you to ride back to wherever you came from. You sure you speak for everybody in your party? I do. Now ride. You say she actually booted you out of camp? Yeah. She told me to ride and I rode. But the more I think about it, the more convinced I am that we can't leave her alone, no matter what she wants. We can't leave him shift for themselves, that's a cinch. What is she, some kind of a sour old misfit? 
No, I wouldn't say that. In fact, she's as good to look at as any woman I've seen. Judging from that sickening, lovelorn look you're wearing, you must like to be treated rough. Now, Charlie, you know my rules. I make it a point never to get too involved with any of them. When something or somebody looks better to a man than anything he's ever seen, he's already involved. No, but I am concerned. I'm worried about her. You're worried about her, huh? Well, I'm worried about you. Well, Flint, maybe you just approached her wrong. There's no doubt about that, Duke. As far as she was concerned, it was hate at first sight. Well, I'll tell you one thing. We better ride out there in the morning and have a talk. Try to reason with her. Well, Chris, you can't reason with women. You have to appeal to their emotions. You're both wrong. Women are just like mules. You've got to be more stubborn than they are. Well, I will admit, strong hand with them doesn't hurt sometimes. Well, I'll take it to her, Chris, but when we get there, you use your methods, because believe me, mine didn't work. What did you do, go home and get your father? See what I mean? Mrs. Frazier, this is Mr. Hale. He's our wagon master. I suppose you're within your rights, Mr. Hale, peddling passage, but we're not interested in any tickets. Well, we wouldn't expect any money, ma'am. We're only here to invite you to join your wagons up with ours. Declined, with thanks. You must have good reason. I may have, but I don't feel obliged to voice them. You have big responsibilities, Mrs. Frazier. Seems to me you'd do anything you could to protect your people. Well, I've been doing just that. I believe to everybody's satisfaction. Well, that may be, but surely you realize you'd be safer with us. Safer because you're men? Well, I don't know. I've been around men. It hasn't always necessarily made me feel safer. Well, they're not only men, ma'am. We've got a lot of women on our train, too. Why don't you leave the decision up to your people? You've all had time to think over what I said last night. Well, going with them won't make it any different when we get to San Francisco than if we had just kept going alone. Leave us be, Mr. Hale. I have work to do to get this train moving. I haven't any more time for chatter. Well, I haven't any more time for chatter either, Mrs. Fraser. But I happen to be a wagon master by profession. That gives me certain and definite responsibilities toward the people I meet on the trail. When, in my judgment, they're in danger, I take steps to help them. I thought you said you'd leave it up to my people. I did, but I've been watching them. You got them all buffaloed. They don't dare think for themselves. I don't know about that, and I don't know about the rest, but I know about me, and I'm going with the men. Me too. I ain't staying here when there are men to protect me. I'm going. It'll be better this way, Maud. You'll see. Thanks for your support. And thank you, Mr. McCullough. Thanks for the help I didn't ask for. How are we doing, Mrs. Frazier? Betsy, what are you doing here? I figured you might like somebody to talk to, so I decided to stay and ride along with you. All right, I guess I can't stay mad at you forever. You really did have your heart set on going back to South Pass, didn't you? Nothing's happened since last night to change my mind about what I said then. Has gold anything to do with why your husband led us through South Pass in the first place? What makes you ask that? Oh, I figured there must be good reason that Mr. Hale's train took a different way and, and we didn't. Well, we talked about it, Isaac and I, but he never would have abandoned his train for any reason. You know that. I suppose you're right. But it's different now. With him gone, I have to think of myself. And I haven't got one problem that gold wouldn't solve. But you haven't got a man to dig it up for you. You can say all you want to about getting along without men. Maybe we did for a while, but you've got to admit it ain't natural. And what one of us wants to go it alone forever. Keeping body and soul together when we're forced to is one thing, but digging for gold is man's work any way you look at it. And maybe I'll just have to get me another man.
Ladies, all right? We are now. Thank you, Mr. McCullough. You saved our lives. Well, I never thought I'd see the independent Mrs. Frazier say thank you to me for anything. Well, I guess I've been wrong about a lot of things. Apology accepted. You have any idea what spooked your horses? The horses? Oh, oh, it was a bee. Uh, a bee stung one of them. A bee, huh? That's strange. I don't believe I've seen a bee out here all day. Oh, it was a bee, all right. I saw it. Where did it sting him? About, uh, up there? Yes, I believe it was. The toughest part of a horse's hide is his rump. No bee in his right mind would risk his stinger there. Well, if it wasn't a bee, I don't know what it was. I do, Mrs. Frazier. It's a whip. Are you trying to say that I... Stay in line, will you? I got enough problems out here quite naturally without somebody trying to think them up for me. One word out of you and I'll make you walk back. Yes, what is it? May I speak to you for a minute? What is it you don't like about me? I didn't say I didn't like you. Oh, you don't have to say it. I will say one thing. I'm puzzled. At first you were so dead set against joining this wagon train, and now suddenly you can't attract enough attention. Did it ever occur to you that I might be sorry for the way I treated you, and I, I, I just wanted a chance to apologize? No. Frankly, it didn't. Do you want me to crawl, Mr. McCullough? No, Mrs. Frazier, I just want to know what you're after. What I'm after? You're obviously a strong-willed, independent woman. And you back that up with beauty. Now, it occurs to me that you never do anything unless it gets you something you want. And you think I want something from you? Yeah, that's the way it would add up. You may be right, Mr. McCullough. <laughs> else puzzling you. You're not mourning for your husband very well. I never loved him. He was a weakling. I don't like weaklings. Maud, I was worried about you. It didn't take you this long to get a little bit of wood. No, I was with Flint. Mr. McCullough. You're joshing. After that little runaway, I didn't think he'd ever talk to you again. Oh, he did more than talk. He kissed me. He did for real? I told you he'd forgive me. Did he say he'd take you back after the gold? No, not yet. That may take a little time. But time is something you don't have. Yes, I know. I've been thinking about that. as well unhitch that team. We won't be traveling today. Oh? Yeah, some of the horses were turned loose during the night, and it'll probably take us most of the day to round them up. Did you say turn loose, Mr. McCullough? That's right, Mrs. Breen. The picket line's still there, so the horses must have been untied separately. Why would anybody want to do a thing like that? We haven't figured that out yet. Will you be back before dark? Yeah, probably. Maybe you'd like to have supper with me. I'd be delighted. I got to hand it to you, Maude. It looks like it won't be long before he's eaten out of your hand. And you got more time, too. Since somebody turned the horses loose and we won't be traveling any farther from South Pass today, you... <gasps> Maude Frazier, you didn't. Didn't what, Bessie? You turned the horses loose so you'd have more time. I'd be careful of accusing somebody of a thing like that, Bessie. Unless you had proof. Well, after dinner like that, the least I can do is help you do these dishes, huh? You'll do nothing of the kind. That's woman's work. I'll do them later. Right now, we're going for a walk. All right. Besides, uh, 
lady always looks her best in the moonlight. Oh, Flint. Your arms are so strong. I, I feel so safe here. Flint, do you think this could be love so soon? I don't know. I'm more than willing to find out. The mountains look so peaceful tonight. It's hard to believe what took place there a few short days ago. Yeah, the face of this country can change pretty quick. Too bad your husband didn't listen to the warning about Red Cloud. I don't understand that. Gold. In South Pass? You've heard about it? Everybody has, and it's there, too. I'm surprised you haven't thought of stopping off to get your share. Oh, I've thought about it. You have? But every time I come this way, I'm tied down. Just never seem to find the time. Isaac was going to take the time. We were going to stay in South Pass. You mean he was going to abandon the train? Oh, he would have turned it over to a competent man. The passengers know that? Not exactly, but... Some of them would have stayed with us, most of them probably. You don't approve of that, do you? No. I don't think I know of a responsibility that's more serious than Ram running a wagon train. And for Amanda, quit in the middle of the trip just for his own greed, I think that's, well, I think that's wrong. Is it wrong to want the decent kind of life gold can give you? That depends. Flint, hmm? there are other men on this train who could scout. You wouldn't be abandoning anybody, not really. You suggesting something? It wouldn't take us long to get back to South Pass, a few days at the most. You and me. Would that be so bad? And just think, Flint, in a month or two, we'd have enough gold to last us forever. And you wouldn't have to waste your life as an Indian scout. What if I told you I wasn't interested in gold? Oh, Flint, don't joke. I'm not joking. If gold was the answer for me, I'd have stopped in South Pass long ago. But doesn't it matter what I want? I'm afraid that's the only thing that matters to you. You matter. I love you, Flint. You know that. I could make myself think so. But I know better. What are you saying? I'm saying I know why your husband wouldn't listen to the warning about Red Cloud. And why he was willing to abandon his train. It wasn't for gold, Maude. It was for you. It was for you, wasn't it? And now we know what you want from me, don't we? You're no more of a man than he was. Why can't you see what's yours for the taking? Why can't you be man enough to take it? You're talking about gold or love? Both! The trouble is you place too much importance on one and not enough on the other. And the sad thing is you don't even know which one you need. Flint, I'm going to South Pass with or without you. Maud, Maud, what you're doing is just plain madness. Don't try to stop me, Bessie, and don't go raising a ruckus hoping somebody else will. It, it was bad enough you planned to go back there with a the man, but, but alone. Why don't you wait till tomorrow morning? Maybe you'll think better of it. Or, or maybe Mr. McCullough will change his mind to go with you. I don't want him and I don't need him. Bessie, when Isaac died, I, I, I just didn't see how I could go on alone. I thought I'd always relied on him, but I was wrong. I found out the only strength he had was me. And as far as I'm concerned, that goes for any man. I don't need them and I don't want them now or ever. You're welcome to come along with me, Bessie. No more. God be with you, Maud Frazier. Goodbye, Bessie.
you hurt? I took a bullet in the back. Oh, maybe I can get it out for you. I've had some experience. No, it's too late for that. Just prop me up so I, I can talk. Put your fire out. They might see it. Who might see it? Indians. Red clouds. Red clouds? Quick, put your fire out. You'll be safe now. Where's your husband? I don't have any. I'm alone. Are you sure Red Cloud is out of the mountain? He came down. He's on the warpath. Wiped out my whole company. I got away to, to warn a, a wagon train that should be in this area somewhere. Red Cloud's Indians caught me. They, they shot me. Yes, I, I heard some mm -hmm. guns. You sure I can't help you? It's too, too late. Just, just listen. I don't have much time. Do you... Do you think you could find that wagon train? Chris, Christopher Hale's train? Uh, I, I, I know where it is. I just came from there. Then get back there tonight as fast as you can. Warn them. They'll be out of Red Cloud's territory by noon tomorrow. It's too late. They've got to pull stakes and roll tonight. The Red Cloud will attack if they're still there in the morning. What were you doing? Well, I, I wasn't exactly headed that way. You've got to go back. Warn them. You sure Red Cloud is out of the mountains? He still isn't hanging around South Pass? I told you. I'm sure. Oh, what's that on you, ma'am? What do you got against those folks? On the train that you don't want to warn them. Well, I didn't say I wouldn't warn them. I'd, I. Soldier? Why didn't you tell me this before? She made me promise not to, but I got to think of what could happen to her. I'm glad you let me know. Duke, you better come with me. I will, if you let me watch the fun when you find her. Fun? Well, sure, I haven't seen a good lover's quarrel since the time you had the ruckus with that girl in Red River. Never mind. I'll get the horses. Hurry. on the warpath. He's going to attack in the morning. How do you know? A soldier was riding to warn you. He, he, he told me before he died. You must hurry. You must roll now, tonight. Did you hear that? I sure did. But on your way, I'll catch up with you later. Right. Oh, Flint, you must go, too. 
I'll go when I'm good and ready. First, I'm going to take care of you. Of you. It was a real runaway this time, boy. Sure it was. Everything is real now. I... I, I found out what I need. Try not to talk. I want you to know. It... It isn't gold. Cool. Why? Why did it take me so long to learn? Why so long before I could care what happened to other people? The important thing is you did learn. Lynn, could you... Could you love me for just a minute? Oh, I'm just so good. Your arms are so strong. 